Hello. So today is the 28th of June. Uh, and there's a reason why I'm saying this. So it's not like I want to say uh, what month it is every single time I go live. Uh, I thought what we would do is a little bit of fun Shimhem Farash. Shimhem Mim Farash or whatever. It's the 72 name of Godhead. Uh, and this one is the 29th name. So what I was going to do is get out my little Kabbalah Center uh, names of God. And we could look at that. And uh, there's quite a quite a history behind this Shim Angel stuff um, that maybe we can go over or something. So uh, let me go ahead and get those materials and I'll be right back. wasn't too long. So the 28th of June is number 29. So I got my little cards here. Uh, found a way to pull cards into it. It's number 29. And uh, I can go over how the shims are, they come about, but it is a little bit lengthy. So I don't know if that'll be a fun thing for everyone to do. Uh, but these are actually really cool cards. Uh, they're shim cards by the Kabbalah Center. And I'm going to go ahead and find number 29. So just takes a moment. I don't know if you can see them. They're just little cards with a three-syllable Hebrew name on them. Uh, but yeah, let me go through them. Might be a little bit frustrating for you. So, you'll just bear with me while I go through these little things. And, uh, boy, I got a little shim presentation for you because I'm a little stressed out today. So, I wanted to pull a shim into this while I talk about the shim hem farash. So, uh, it's pretty amazing, actually. But it takes me a moment to get to the proper material. I didn't set it up, so that's why I'm kind of prattling on. I didn't set up that I was going to pull shim cards on this. I didn't even know I was going to. But, uh, you know, that's what happens. We get together and we get to have these kind of cool things. So, yeah. Here, let's look for number 29. And it's June 28th. That's number 29. I have a chart here that I made. Uh... There's a lot that goes into it, but here, let me just find number 29. So, I don't know them by heart, unfortunately. Uh, but, there's a really cool meditation on it when I find it, so. Uh, and on each one of these little shim cards, there's a oracle and a meditation, so they can be kind of fun, you know? Um, but... You'll want to know what it is beforehand. That way we don't run into this. But when I find it, we'll go through a whole bunch of fun stuff with it. Excitement is killing you, huh? You're bored. <laughs> don't be bored. It's the Shimham Farash. And I'll tell you why it's not boring. The 72 name of God was the uh, ineffable name that was not spoken in the Holy of Holies in Judaism. But the Kabbalistic masters knew how to permeate the letters to come about this name. So there, there are actually a certain number of verses, which I can go over, but in Exodus there's a three... Uh, verses that you put together and you align the letters bodhisattvacally, I think you call it. Uh, but it's a way that you align those letters and they line up to these shim names. So you're gonna love it. Don't get mad. 
You're going to hear all kinds of stuff. And I'm not going to explain every little bitty aspect of it. So, yada yada. I'll show you the cards, what they look like. They're just these little bitty shim cards. And they're nothing super important unless you know how to activate them, which I'm going to show you how to do. Because you're lucky today and you get to see. Plus, I'm going to put this on YouTube. So if you want to say something fun, I'll maybe comment on that. God, is number 29 all the way at the bottom of these cards? I think it is. 27. You don't want to hear me name all these off. Ah, here it is. This one is number 29, which is Rush Yud Yud. The meditation is, I need to be painfully honest. I acknowledge every person or group of people that stir up feelings of anger, envy, malice, total disgust, or any combination thereof. With the light of this name, I have the power to drop the poisonous negative feelings that exist inside me. So there's a cool way to intone these letters. Uh, after you've opened up the Kabbalistic gates, which I have not, but if you wanted to open up the Kabbalistic gates, you could open up the Kabbalistic gates. And once they are open, you could then intone this uh, and you can see up here, I got the, the, my mama D's book, but, um, they are, I forget what they're called, but they're like attributes of Godhead. Because Godhead is inevitable, there are little bitty, not little bitty, but their names, homonyms, those are the words, they are homonyms of Godhead. So these names are actually homonyms, but they're divine homonyms, so... It can get a little bit complicated when you try to reason out what we're doing. <clears throat> but anyway, so you want to go ahead and take your left fingers and put them on your heart. And then you go like this. Oh. And that opens up the vibratory area in your aura. Then you go. Rush, yud, yud. And then that fires out a Kabbalistic signal to the astral, and you're able to open your aura up to that specific vibratory numerical uh, sequence. But I got cooler stuff that you can do with uh, Shem names. Because yours truly is an occultist. Let me get the book out real quick and I'll show you. You're not going to see this anywhere else. I promise you that. First, hardly anybody knows what I'm about to show you. Second, if they do know it, they're not, they're not very keen on what to do with it. So, these are the tables of the 72 angels. This is a reproduction that I got off the internet for where the seals of the angelic uh, names are at. So what they do is they list back in, God, I don't know all the years. I think it was the early 1600s. Let me find the name for you. This is in French. I don't read French. If I did, this would be an awesome video. But this was back in, uh, let's see if I can see a date. Uh, manuscript Arsenal 2495. So, no, I don't see the year that these were about. Anyway, there's a lot of history behind this. If you're interested in it, go look it up. It's called the Table de 72 Anges, uh, Manuscript of the Arsenal Library in France, 2495. There's an important reason why I got out this book. Not only because it's shims, but the uh, names that are in the highest levels, 
I can prove it, but I won't. You just got to take my word for it. The highest levels of initiatic uh, uh, ritual and the Golden Dawn come from this book. So when Mathers went to the libraries in France, he consulted this book, which is Arsenal 2495, and uh, it was written by Blaise Vigneri. I think that's how you say the name. Uh, but anyway, this was the major book that has been taken in both Golden Dawn and Martinism uh, to represent the Shimham Farash. You are going to get no better treatment in modern days than this nice little French manuscript. If you read French, I highly, highly recommend you to go buy it. But in this book, they give you the dates of the Shem and their angels. Now, this was reproduced, okay, by Robert Ambelain in the early 1900s in a book called Practical Kabbalah, which you can go get on the internet. Uh, the reason why I'm going through this is it's very, very important. Because in the book of Ambelain, he is translating a French book uh, by the last name Lenain, L-E-N-A-I-N. And Lenain got his from the Arsenal 2495. So both the Golden Dawn and the Elu Cohen got their material from 2495. So anybody wants to argue that, I'll go to bat with you for that. Uh, but that is the modern Shimhem Farash representation. We're looking at the ancient, though. So where did the ancient come from, right? I got that answer for you, too. So in the early 1300s, uh, Abu Lafia, um, <clears throat> this is his last name, in Spain, came up with the way of manipulating and permeating uh, Hebrew letters. And this was his methodology. I'm not going to teach it to you, but you can go get the books if you want. Go on Scribe. You can learn Abu Lafia's uh, intonation method where you do these things with the letters and you open up your channels by looking up with your eyes and looking down and breathing a certain amount of times. And you'll make yourself available uh, in the Hippodedit. I think it's called Hippodedit uh, for... Kabbalistic reception of this kind of current that these rabbis were getting prior to the Zohar. So if you know what I'm talking about, you're learning a whole bunch of information that you probably won't find anywhere else uh, because everybody pretty much has thrown, as, as far as Moshe Idel says, has thrown Abu Lafia away. But Abulafia is very, very important to occultists. Uh, so that's the reason why I talked about that. Now, there's one more thing I wanted to show you related to the Shem, which is absolutely my favorite tarot deck. So stay put. I'll be right back. <clears throat> this is... Tavaglione's Stairs of Gold Tarot. And are you in for a treat? This is out of print. Uh, and my deck is actually a gift from Christine Payne Toller, who gave this to me. Uh, she wanted me to have it. On the, on the deck of the miners, you'll see Shem Seals. Here, check that out. You'll see a Shem Seal. So, number 72s, or not number 72, but there's a whole big old chart that Tavaglione did in the Little White Book, which Christine Payne Tyler has reproduced in her Tarot of the Holy Light. So, uh, that Tarot card that we're looking at right now this is going to get deeper and deeper. So, hope you're ready for a Shimham Farash evening. Uh, it's in appendix number six. And it's about the Shim Angels. I don't know if you can read that. Graph of the Shim Angels. So we're going to go and you can go to my website too. There's a secret area I've been developing for Gnostic Tarot cards. 
if you go up to the zodiacal uh, link on the header, and then you click at the bottom on the Shimham Farash uh, Hebrew letters, it will take you to an area where you can pull up uh, somewhat of a Shem representation. There's a lot more information I put into this. I've been working on Shems for years, so this is something I really am happy to share. Uh, so number, let's see, June 28th is number 29. And what is the name? That's where you got to check your references to know what number 29 is. So number 29, uh, well, it's in Ambalane's uh, book, uh, Practical Kabbalah, like I was saying. Let me, I don't know, oh, my phone's right there. So find what number 29 is in Practical Kabbalah, and you'll see the one we're talking about right now. I can look in the French book, though, and see that today... And these are in five degree segments. So today's the 28th of March. So we're just going to go to the 28th of March. Or not 28th of March, 28th of June. Boom! That just happened. Uh, anybody know what June is in French? Uh, no, that's January, February, September, June, J-U-I-N, June. So, I wanted to be able to go right here for you. I didn't know we were going to do a Shim presentation. I just thought, you know, I'm a little stressed out, so I wanted to go to the Shim Hem Farash. Uh, let me do this a little easier. Go to Ambalane who translated Lenain, and then uh, we can look up this number of the Shim. I'll find it for you real quick. I know you guys are having fun. I'm having fun. Let's see if this is charged. Sometimes I... Yeah, 67%. So there's enough charge on here to go to an Ambalane book. You heard that. <laughs> uh, I got tons of books. Not only these books. I don't have Anne Boleyn's books because they're in French, but they were translated by Piers Vaughn. And Piers Vaughn gave me all of the Anne Boleyn books that there are that he translated. So I just need to go to my internal, uh, whatchamacallit, my internal network. And then I can pull up the Ambulane books. So I have an external uh, hard drive set up on a network. So all I have to do is go right to it. And then I can pull up all these books. Aren't I so cool? You know I'm cool. Let me get a thumbs up for how cool I am, yeah? yeah. I'm about to blow your guys' mind. You haven't seen nothing yet. B -b -b baby you just you didn't do nothing yet. <laughs> if you look up there, you'll see a couple of trinkets. One that you will probably never see anywhere else. Uh, right there is my grandfather's 32nd degree Masonic hat. So I got that from him. That's one of the authentic Masonic hats. Uh, that were passed down from master to master to my grandfather. Before he died, he attained his 32nd degree. So, fun stuff. Uh, if you haven't noticed yet, this is my absolute favorite topic. To talk about occultism, tarot, Martinism. Uh, so, let me find the Ambulane books. Practical Kabbalah. We're almost there. You're being so patient. It's so awesome. And I'll give you a little bit more information. If you want to go to my website, it will not be a loss for you to do if you're uh, looking for more shim information. Uh, but probably don't care. So I care. This is one of my absolute favorite topics.
<laughs> bored yet? I'm bored. I'm just... I wish I knew we were going to talk about this. Otherwise, I would have prepared all this material in advance. I never know what we're going to talk about before we do. So it's kind of cool. So here we go. Number 28 on my chart, uh, as translated from this book, is Reheyel. Well, of course. So that's how you say this. The Resh Yod Yod is Reheyel. And now you're bringing in a divine presence of an actual anthropomorphic force. His attribute is God quick to help. It corresponds to the holy name of the, the holy divine name Zimi in the language of the Peruvians. His ray commences from the 141st degree up to the 145th degree inclusive, corresponding to the 15th decade and to the angel called Fupe, P H U P E, under the influence of Mars. He rules over the following days 17th of April, 28th of June. Uh, 8th of September, 9th of November, and 30th of January. That's what my chart shows is a really quick uh, date. I mean, I may give it to you guys to download. I have, This is my personal thing that I use for myself. Uh, and there's a reason why I'm going through all this, by the way. But I put it in a nice little calendar with numbers. And you can see the... Calendar to Shem use, and you can see all of the numbers of the Shem. Anyway, the invocation is done from 9.20 a.m. till 9.40 a.m. The divine names are pronounced with request, and the fourth verse of Psalm 53. That's an important part. Uh, in Abu Lafia, they did a thing, Psalmody, which was a way to practice psalms. And you uh, get into the psalm and start to experience the energy that, you know, they did when they were invoking these presences for King David. So really fun stuff in Psalm of the, but uh, I don't know it completely. It's actually really complicated and I'm not Jewish, so I can't go to the actual Jewish sources and get the practices. But it's Psalm, uh, the fourth verse of Psalm 53. Behold, God is mine helper. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. And I actually went through and vetted every one of these verses. Uh, I have it on another, not link, but I have it on another thing where um, I vetted every one of these things. And I looked up the, the Gematria too, the Bible code Gematria. So that's super fun stuff. This is in the Latin and I can't say Latin, but he serves against the impious and the enemies of religion and to be delivered from all enemies, both visible and invisible. This angel rules over all religious sentiment, divine philosophy and meditation. The person born under this influence will be distinguished by his virtues and his zeal to propagate truth. He will make every effort to destroy impiety through his writings and by example. The bad angel rules over fanaticism and hypocrisy. He rules over all those who propagate irreligion through the writings and dangerous maxims. So that's Rahiel, not Raphael. Uh, and there's another toy I'm going to show you with this. So, as I was saying, in the Shem section of Christine's book, now I know what name it is. That's the whole reason why I had to go through all of that. Because she has it written by the name of the shim, not the number. Uh, so we're going to look. Reheyel, 21st to the 25th degrees. And it's the Five of Cups. So now we know what card it is. We go to Tableon. You're so lucky to get this all in one setting. You know how long this takes to actually understand and put together? Like, forever. 
And people will lie to you because there's those that have a vested interest in disinformation of the Shim Angels. So, uh, you're just lucky. I'm looking for the Five of Cups right now. And I'm going to show you the cool part. So, Tavlyon uh, went through all of this material I'm sharing with you and got the attributions right. Uh, not only did Christine put it in her book, but we've had extensive conversations about this. So, I'm going to show you the Five of Cups when I find it. And... Maybe someone can bust out that psalm. Say the psalm. Five of Cups. Mm -hmm. That right there is the Shim seal for the Five of Cups. That is the divine seal that Lenane found from this manuscript. There is no other information for the Shim in the Western esoteric tradition than in this manuscript, 2495 Arsenal. I was very lucky to get it. You can't actually go into the Arsenal library and photocopy it. So these are reproductions of those photocopies that were done by a private printer. Uh, and his name... I don't even remember where you find this. You can go online. It's Editions du Monolete. Uh, but I'll give you the ISBN if there is one. I don't know if there is. Know how long it took me to get these seals and all this information, and here you are just hopping on live me and seeing all of this right off the bat. But I'm not doing it just for you. I'm going to put this on Gnostic Tarot cards because I've been working on this project for six years. So, and I got more information about the shims too that I could give, but I, I, I haven't yet. Uh, so anyway, Five of Cups. This is the one we got for today. And this date right now of this video, I got this nice little simple shim card, and then you got the Five of Cups. So anybody that pulls a Five of Cups throughout all the planet today will resonate with this frequency. This is actually the zodiacal frequency. Now we're getting into it. So the shims are based on degrees of the zodiac. And they're chopped into five degree functions in the zodiac. Well, this is today's degree chip. So this little game piece right here, actually in the energy world, uh, everything is resonating at this frequency. Uh, all thought, emotion, will, all of the higher function and higher order thought. Uh, or, here's the cool part about Shem's. There's a lunar aspect, a reversed Shem Angel. So when the angel is not being listened to, the reverse lunar aspect of the Shem Hem Faresh is that there's a Klepot energy that sucks in the thoughts, feelings, and will of the practitioner. And that shell, so to speak, the Klepot, uh, Q-L-I-P-O-T-H, those organize in a non-unified way. So in the Kabbalah, you have, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, blah, 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 on and on and on. You have it, uh, you have it laid out. But underneath, you have not a unity to unity. You have a, a duality to duality. It's, it's split. So you can't unify and become centered in a klepot like mindset. Uh, that is whatever breaks apart the unity in your life. Those are the forces that are coming out from the reversed Shem today. So, wow. So angels and demons, huh? Uh, so yeah, that's the Five of Cups. That's the Shem Am Farash for today. There's more stuff, but I think that is a lot to ponder 
Uh, so you can take that with you to your astrological haven today and look at it in your own chart and see where that planet is in that section of your zodiac because uh, there's more, but this particular frequency in that area of the zodiac, the sun is in that area of the zodiac. It doesn't matter what house or what area that zodi zodiacal uh, location, so to speak, is in your chart. That is calling attention from Godhead, from the thoughts, the feelings, and the will of the higher order functioning and the ineffable force behind that. Uh, the Godhead is forcing us to pay attention to that area. And when we don't pay attention to that area, it's actually causing an adverse effect. Uh, we're not able to get the benefits that were listed on the Resh Yud Yud. We're getting their detriments. So uh, we're not able to be painfully honest. We don't acknowledge every person or group of people that stir up feelings of anger, envy, malice, total disgust, or any combination thereof. So what happens is the egoic spirit takes over and is the negation of the spiritual attributes of the shim angels that are trying to deliver to us all the time, no matter what, whatever's going on. Uh, we're in a non-receptive place, so we don't get these principles delivered to us, and we don't get that magna information coming through our thoughts, feelings, and will. Any questions? <laughs> uh, I got a library here to answer any questions anybody may have, because that is a lot of info. That's a condensed version of theurgical and Kabbalistic and tarot synthesis, uh, one of the highest forms of actual practice you can do. Now, I didn't teach any methods of like angel invocation or anything like that, which can be found, um, but the invocatory spells of these angels is definitely available. You could coerce a force and you can uh, you can align with the force. So that's what the psalm uh, singing basically does, is it opens your aura up and sensitizes you to this information. So you're carrying it around in you. And when almost all these are about interacting with other souls and other human beings. So when you clash into another aura of a living sentience, uh, it goes wham, and either there's a connection or there's a disconnection. So your aura speaks to that person's aura, uh, and then you're able to have a communication through words about whatever that aura is speaking or cutting off from the other person's aura. And this happens irrespective if we know anything about occultism or esotericism. But this happens just by the natural law of resonation uh, and uh, similitude of form. So when your aura is prepared to resonate with someone else's, it throws off an etheric vibration and it's like a bell being rung. You ring a bell and uh, here, let me get a bell. <laughs> So the moment we resonate with one of the happy spirits or the non-happy spirits or the broken spirits or the non-broken spirit, whatever you want to call that division, what happens is our aura goes like this. And it fires off an auric resonation to other people and other auras within the environment that you're going into. The bell doesn't get unrung. The moment you wake to consciousness and the feelings, thoughts, and will get activated, it's like ringing the bell. It's like going bong. And so you're able to move into another person's field of experience. And when they have bonged, you're either able to make it on or off connection orically. 
And then you get like this feeling like, wow, I really am gravitating toward this person. I'm really connecting with you. I really have a feeling of coherence and unity. Or you have the clip hoped, which goes, wow, I'm really not having an experience of unity and connection with you. There's a division and the clip hope is constantly ringing out into your aura saying, uh, enemy, enemy, alert, alert. And in the functional area of interaction socially, we're not able to kind of bring in the inner experience of that person. It's all at a surface level and it becomes like, well, I don't like you because you said this to me and that to me and you didn't look at me this way and you didn't follow me back on live me. So I can't possibly like you today. And it sets off a bong the bell uh, that calls out other people's bong bells. And, uh, you know, we get stuck in this contract where we're trying to make meaning out of this non-verbal, non-intelligible, but bodily known energy that we get off of other people uh, and we give out to other people. So that is definitely one of the lessons of the Shimham Thresh. That's why Abu Lafia called... Uh, the several levels of the Kabbalistic soul uh, in attunement in Hippodet, H-I-T-B-O-D-E-T, -E Hippodet, of uh, other people and experiences of Godhead within them. Uh, the Nefesh kind of clings to other Nefeshes. So, yeah. Fun stuff, Five of Cups, Shim Angels, ringing bells, popping off auras. You know, so it's Friday night in the Western United States. Uh, it, and a lot of people may be popping bottles. You know, you're popping bottles and you're trying to find somebody to... <laughs> I don't mean to go like that. But, you know, you're popping bottles and you're trying to get somebody to resonate with your aura. What happens when you run into a person that has the same coordinates GPS-wise as your aura does? You make a meshing of your inners and their inners. And then because you're connected, you try to make a validation or rationalized statement for why are we so connected? What is this that's unbreaking in us? And it's because there hasn't been the shattering of the vessels yet uh, because we're these like clinging tentacled uh, attributes that don't know we have clinging tentacled attributes. And to break apart that is to then go into another area of clinging and uh, attachment. But it's not a negative thing. It's only a negative thing when the aura of another person is bonged at a place where uh, it busts up the resonance or similitude of form in your aura, causes you harm, causes you pain, causes you to doubt your own inner continuity and inner channel. Christine Payne Towler, who's my teacher, and Foundations of the Esoteric Tradition. Ah, in this book, which is a really good tarot book, um, talks about a norming signal that we put off a norming, N-O-R-M-I-N-G, not like norm from Cheers, but a norming signal. So we set off a norming signal that, you know, I'm okay in these circumstances, but when I'm not in these circumstances, I'm not okay. And other people do that too. So... May your inner light find the light of another, and may your inner light aspire another to light themselves. Om. <laughs> Peace out.